Hey, what's up everybody? Welcome to Whistlekick Martial Arts Radio, episode 175. And this is our very first video episode. That's right, if you happen to be watching on YouTube, you're probably shocked right now that you're seeing my face. You're not seeing an episode graphic. We're gonna talk about more why in just a moment. What's this episode about? Today we're gonna talk about the importance of martial arts forms. In fact, I'm gonna give you my top 10 reasons why martial arts forms are critical to training. I wanna thank you for tuning in. If you're new to the show, thanks for dropping by. You picked a pretty neat episode to check out. We have 174 other episodes, every one of them with my voice, no video. But here you get to check out what's going on. We talk about the traditional martial arts, aspects of the martial arts, interviews with prominent martial artists, interesting martial artists, Hopefully, they're all interesting. If you want to check out the show notes for this or any other episode or find the other episodes, the best place for that is whistlekickmartialartsradio.com. I'm going to be using notes today. I use notes for every episode, but you don't see them because it's an audio show most of the time. Am I missing anything? You should subscribe. If you haven't subscribed to this channel, this YouTube channel yet, please do. If you're not subscribing to our podcast releases on iTunes or Stitcher or what's the one I use, Beyond Pod or whatever, please do so. That way you're not going to miss one of our great every other week, no, twice a week episodes. I'm probably also going to do one take for this, which is not typical for me. All right. Let's talk about it. Let's talk about why we're doing video for this. So this is a subject that's pretty important to me, forms. I love forms. And it's a subject that gets criticized a lot. So as I was putting together the notes, I found that I was having a bit of an emotional response to it, knowing what some of the criticisms would be and knowing some people in my life that are critical of forms. And I thought, hey, if I'm going to do any episode with video, this is a good one to start. So I'm going to try it. have no idea if this is going to happen again. I kind of want to know what you guys think. So let me know. Social media, at Whistlekick everywhere, or uh, comment on the video itself, on the show notes uh, page, or on YouTube. You know, just let me know. What do you think? So let's talk about forms. Let's talk about my top 10 reasons why martial arts forms are important. First, forms, kata, plumse, toll, patterns, sequences. I don't think anybody calls them sequences. I like to throw it in. What is a form? Form is a set of movements that you are instructed to do. It's in every school I've ever trained at or heard of. It's something that doesn't change very often. They are foundational to the style. They're foundational to the system. And they are often debated as to their historical accuracy and who changed this movement from this to that. Most of you probably know what a form is. Forms have been around as long as martial arts has. They're a way that martial arts has been trained and passed down over the generations. And with that history, that depth of history, I think it's safe to say that forms are not a waste of time. If something doesn't work, if it's not a good way of doing something, if it doesn't have value, it doesn't survive very long. Some people think they're a waste of time. And I would say that they're a waste of time if your interest is solely combat. And I, I can even make a case for why forms have combat application. We're going to talk about those. But if you are in a self-defense only sort of school or mindset, if all you care about is defending yourself, there are probably things you can spend your time doing that would serve you better than forms. I, I won't argue that. I've said on this show that one of the things I love the most about martial arts is that you get out of it what you put into it directly. There's no more, no less. 
I think the quote that I've used that we've used on social media, you get out of martial arts exactly and only what you put in. And I feel that forms training is the best example of that within the martial arts. So here are my top 10 reasons for practicing forms. Number one. No, we're going to go backwards. I'm going to have to do math as I do this. Number 10. <laughs> Muscle memory for techniques. So I think we can all agree that practicing your basic techniques is important. Whether it's punches or kicks or locks or whatever. The, the foundational individual movements are critical to your development as a martial artist. There's a reason we call them basics. They're the foundation. And forms, in most systems, are the basics and the newer basics for that rank. Generally, when you learn a form, there's a couple new concepts or new techniques in there that you're intended to work on. It's another way of working on your basics. It's a prescribed way of building that muscle memory and incorporating those movements into what you do. It can really help students understand the sequencing of movements, blocking, kicking, punching, etc. Number nine, it can help you develop your movements outside of the pressure of combat. If all you do is sparring, learning how to do new things can feel really intimidating, really threatening. What happens if you just throw a white belt in to spar who doesn't know anything? They're, they're not only going to get their butt handed to them, they could get hurt, but more importantly, they're not going to learn anything. When we learn new movements, we tend to slow them down if necessary. We practice them at different speeds. That's all the same reasons you would practice forms. Forms give people a safe space to experiment with their knowledge. Number eight, you can practice forms on your own. There aren't a lot of great things in martial arts to do that. You can practice your basics, you can practice shadow boxing, but you can get a lot out of your forms doing them on your own. Number seven, it adds variety. Forms training brings some variety to what you're doing with your training. And the more variety that you have as a martial artist, the more different things you practice in different ways, the better the martial artist you are. A diverse martial artist is more likely to be able to handle what a fight or just life in general throws at them. Number six, forms training is fun. Maybe not for everybody, but it can be. I think it is. Most of the people I've found that dislike forms, practicing their forms, are the people that really need to practice them the most. Number five, your forms training can help develop the physical aspects of the martial arts. Because you don't have to think in the same way that you would if you were sparring, you can say, really work on your stances, work on your power, work on your speed. There's a foundation of knowledge of how that form is going to go and you can kind of let yourself flow into it and go through it. How quickly can I do this form? How powerfully can I do this form? Physical benefits come back out. Number four, the development of the non-physical aspects. We're starting to get into the ones that I think are, are, are most important. I, I didn't really order these in any kind of extremely intentional way but I did save the ones that I thought were most important for the end. Forms help you develop that discipline, that focus, that intensity. Most of us have seen someone do a form really well, and it's an incredible experience. You look at that person, you say, I, I would not want to get in a fight with them. Because of those kind of non-physical aspects, the facial expressions, and these are the things that honestly, most schools do not train outside of forms. When I do a form for competition or demonstration, it's an interesting experience for me. And the best way to explain is I go to sort of a dark place. I train my forms when I'm, I'm going at my 100%, I guess, or, or somewhere near it, as if I'm in a battle. 
and I'm winning that battle. And I try to visualize every movement that I'm doing in its actual application. And I bring a lot of intensity to that and from that. Because I see myself winning. Number three, forms make you think. Makes you think about the application. In karate, it's called bunkai. You think about whether you're doing these movements correctly. You know, striving for perfection, which tends to be a goal in forms. We're trying to make sure, you know, our feet are in the right place, our hands in the right place, this stances are good, and, you know, things make sense, and, and you know, hips are turning, and shoulders, and, and just all the minutia. We don't tend to do that with our basics because there isn't necessarily a right or a wrong way to do them. If there is, and I guess there, there are certainly wrong ways, but with forms, because we have that inherited concept of application that also tends to get passed down with forms, there's a lot more to it that we can go into. And when you spend that much time trying to make your foot point in the right place and your fist go to the right location, you tend to approach the rest of your life in a similar way. You strive for perfection. And it's not a bad thing. It's a very good thing. We don't tend to have that same aspect of, of seeking perfection with our, our training. In fact, you know, sparring tends to be the last place we look for that. Number two, forms can create unification or common ground within a school or a style, a system, you know, whatever grouping of people. There's some great videos that pop around on the internet with different styles of martial arts doing what's essentially the same form, but just different variations. And those are a lot of fun to watch because it gives common ground and you see how things just kind of went off and different martial arts pioneers created their own, their own variants of those forms. And the final one, the one that I, I think people don't talk about ever, uh, if not that I'm saying I've invented this concept because I certainly haven't, but I've never heard anyone talk about this in, within the concept of forms. Doing your forms can help develop stronger neural pathways to push your central nervous system. What do I mean by that? You can overload your body in such a way that it adapts. Because forms are a repetitive thing, you learn them, you learn how to do them, you can, you know, you get to a point you can do it in your sleep. I want you to imagine the, the first form you learn, whether that's uh, Chongji in Taekwondo or Teki Shodan, Pinyan Shodan, Heian Shodan. Gosh, I don't know how many first forms I know, but uh, you know what I mean? Take that first one, it's usually low block and punch. How fast can you do that? You can probably do that pretty darn quickly. Probably much faster than you can do your higher ranked forms. If you spend time training that form at your upper threshold of speed, you will become faster. You won't just practice being at that speed and be comfortable at that speed. Your body will actually develop the capacity to move faster. You can say the same thing about the power you put into those forms. If you train throwing every movement powerfully, as powerfully as you can, you will develop the capacity for even greater power. And that's going to apply not just in that form, not just in your forms, but all of your martial arts. When I think about forms, when I think about the importance of forms, this is what I really think it, it's meant to do. You are acting out a battle. You're showing that you're winning. And in doing so, you actually are preparing yourself to do battle and to be successful. I may end up doing a show on this kind of central nervous system neural pathway concept because it's something I haven't heard of spoken in the martial arts before, but there's some great stuff in there. Hopefully that gives you some ideas. I bet there are more reasons. I wanted to see if I can come up with 10. I got 10 pretty quickly. And it's been time coming up with more. It's a Thursday show. 
So what ones did I miss? You can get to us on social media, at Whistlekick on Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, Pinterest, Instagram. You can check out the show notes at whistlekickmartialartsradio.com. You can find the great stuff we sell at whistlekick.com. Hopefully you're subscribing. Hopefully you'll share this episode with other people. If you listened to this episode and you didn't watch it, maybe you want to see my face and what one of the walls in my house looks like. Because, yes, I record these from home. Because I don't go out to the warehouse and all the time. I don't live out there. I work from home. Don't tell anybody. <laughs> okay. Thank you for listening. Um, what else can I say? I think that's it. It's time to wrap up. Tired of looking at me yet? <laughs> Until next time, train hard, smile, and have a great day.